Hyper Armor, or Super Armor, is one of the most essential features of DS3's combat. It allows you to punish opponents that use lighter and faster weapons that would otherwise be much less risky to start attacks with. This is why outside no healing 1v1s, even the most meta combat seems to feature high poise hyper armor weapons. The same for the rest of the player base as well. However, unfortunately for you, if you've ever actually played the game with a hyper armor weapon, you've probably been quite puzzled before by the strange seeming inconsistencies of this mechanic. You've probably been in a scenario like this. Same weapon class, about the same poise, but despite that, the times where you and or them get interrupted seems quite arbitrary. The truth is, this is not arbitrary at all and can be explained, no matter how absurd the scenario is. There's been videos before that explain this well. However, almost everybody new who watches these still has a lot of trouble translating what they learnt to in-game. There's also some other things left unaddressed that seem to confuse people, such as latency. So, I thought I would use my experience modding this game to edit the actual game's code to visualize the inner workings of this mechanic. Now, that's a lot of information on screen. Let's hide a bit of it for now and we'll walk you through the basics. Whenever a player is simply tinted, regardless of color, they are not in hyper armor frames. When they are brightly glowing, they are. What are frames? Frames are basically one time unit of the game's logic, as the game's graphics and logic timing are timed together. So as long as the player is actually in that state of hyper armor or not hyper armor, it will visually correspond as I coded it to. Now, what do the colors mean? I coded it so that the player's color represented their hyper armor health on the scale of a color spectrum. Red being the lowest and purple being the highest. You'll notice that it seems to always go to a lower color when you attack with the hyper armor weapon, but usually goes back to the previous color if you don't get hit. The thing is, when you're not in hyper armor frames, the value acts as a percentage, being 0 to 100 in the game's memory. However, when you move into hyper armor frames, it seems to be a base value which varies from attack to attack multiplied by the original percentage value. When you leave hyper armor, it seems to multiply 100 by the ratio of remaining hyper armor health to the base hyper armor health. Go back and slow down the video if you need a sec to understand that math. But the gist of it is, the value while you're not in hyper armor frames is a multiplier. This value will only be used if you go into hyper armor, otherwise it has no effect on if you get staggered or not. Poise given by weapon arts like Perseverance and Unfaltering Prayer are completely different and have their own virtual values. More on that later. As you may have observed, this multiplier isn't always 100%. If you get hit during the hyper armor attack and don't get staggered, it will lower. If you get hit while not performing an attack, it will lower. Higher poise damaging attacks, which are often from heavier and larger weapons in their two-handed state, will lower this value more severely. Your poise stat is what lessens this damage. How do you get back this hyper armor health? Well, Often if somebody is swinging away at you, they will reset it without you or them knowing. When it reaches zero, the value resets to 100. This is also what happens when you get poise broken during a hyper armor attack, which I indicate through this purple burst effect. There's also a passive solution. If you manage to not get a single hit on you for 30 seconds, your hyper armor health will reset to 100. Yep, not active regeneration, but instant 100 after 30 seconds. But thankfully, Miyazaki implemented two ways for us to get some or all of our hyper armor health back instantly. First, any ordinary hyper armor attack will instantly reset this back to 80 before the active hyper armor health is even evaluated. This means that if you're full havel being poked away by an SDOC user till you're at one hyper armor health, they can't simply poke you out midway of your charged dragon tooth R2. So, effectively, you only need to worry about going below 80%. Unless you are fighting a group, they probably can't hit you more than once or twice during your hyper armor frames. Think about it like this. If you are not in hyper armor and your character is anything below this blue, treat it as if it was this blue. Why only 80%? For example, trading with two-handed greatswords at 40 poise will result in you being hyper armor broken. A single two-handed greatsword hit is enough to take you below 80%, so you don't want to trade after being hit once unless you get back to 100 a straight sword takes 3 hits to take you below 80%, although if you're trading with a straight sword at 40 poise, 80% poise health is all you need. 
so simply don't get hit outside of your hyper armor frames and you won't be interrupted. Back to the greatsword mirror scenario. You should also remember how many times you hit your enemy and when their hyper armor likely got reset, so you know if you can break their hyper armor. See, I actually got his poise down, so I'll win the next trade. Now I won't, so I gotta get my poise back. And that right there is a quick and easy method to get back to 100%. You can use almost any weapon art that has hyper armor and it will instantly restore your poise health on the first frame of the hyper armor. This should only be used in scenarios where you know you can win the current matchup if you have 100% but not far below it. Please note that the poise health restoration only comes at the starting frame of the hyper armor attack, so if you get hit any time after that frame in or outside of hyper armor, you will lose poise health and you will need to use a hyper armor weapon art again to get back to full. This even includes perseverance. The passive poise effect you get is unrelated and is not constantly restoring your poise health. So don't be fooled into thinking you can trade with it after it goes away if you were hit any time after you started the weapon art. If you are still confused thus far in the video, let me clear up the terms I use and what they mean in each context, as well as some information I'm yet to mention. Hyper armor, or super armor, refers to specifically the state that allows you to not get interrupted by hits that would otherwise stagger you. This state is visualized in the video by the player glowing instead of being tinted. Poise can refer to the hyper armor state or several other things that I will now specify. Poise health is the color-coded hidden stat that no one can see without modding their game. It is very essential, however, and it indicates what percent of the base hyper armor you will have after you enter hyper armor frames of an attack. While during the attack, it instead indicates how much hyper armor health you have left before you may be interrupted. Poise damage refers to the amount to be subtracted from one's hyper armor health before or after it is reduced by the poise stat of the receiving player. No matter weapon level or scaling, a weapon will always have the same base poise damage, which is then multiplied usually by the heavier or lighter attacks of the weapon. Two-handed attacks seem to have stronger poise damage than one-handed attacks. You can also receive poise damage from latent hits that appear to hit because it landed on the attacker's side, but not the receiving end side because of a roll. For whatever reason, like in the latency video, everything but the actual damage and stagger is applied on these hits. The poise stat, or poise defense as it would be most accurate to call it, is the in-game stat you can see in your menu. It starts at zero, but can be boosted usually by heavier armors, special rings, or weapons. The game uses this stat to calculate how much it should reduce incoming poise damage. It's significant enough to make certain matchups possible that wouldn't be with less poise, but it's important to know that some matchups you cannot make possible with this stat. For example, you cannot survive a trade using a two-handed glaive against a two-handed greatsword while you are at 80% poise health. There's just not enough poise you can put on yourself to make it happen. So there's a lot more I would like to talk about on this, but I think it would be best if I made this into another video. Ask your questions about things I've missed or need to clear up in the comments, and I'll love to go over it. I also want to go over explaining specifically the confusing scenarios that some of you may have had. These can be related or unrelated to latency. You can send them to me here in the comments or on Discord which you can find in the description. If I need to, I can try and recreate the scenario in game to see what exactly is going on. I'm sure there's no shortage of clips with baffling scenarios such as for example, a greatsword player losing their trade against a latent straightsword despite the greatsword blade appearing to hit first. So be sure to send these my way before or after I make this follow-up video. And that's all I have to say for now. I'll leave you guys with this satisfying clip which lays out the exact order of events of a greatsword trade. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in part two.